Okay, so now we're talking about solving systems of equations using the elimination method, also referred to as the addition method. And the reason why it's called the addition method is, uh, everybody agree if you have A equals B and C equals D, this is the idea. If A and B are equal and C and D are equal, then true or false, A plus C should equal B plus D. Right? We're just kind of adding up both sides of the equal sign. Right? Does that make sense? So here's our first example. All right. So now the goal is uh, where it gets its name. Our goal is to add up, you know, the the both sides of the equal sign. But we want to do it in such a way that one of the variables disappears. Hence the name, the elimination method. So like we can see right here that if we just immediately added up our like terms, you have x and negative x. The x's go away, and you get 3y plus 2y which is 5y, and the right side you get 1 plus 4, which is 5. And you get 5y equals 5, so y equals 1. Right? That's kind of the goal. You want to make sure that when you add them up, one of your variables disappears, so you're left with one equation with one letter, because then you can go solve that for the variable, right? Now, just like with solving with the substitution method, you're going to be tempted to go, woohoo, I'm done! All right, but no, you're only, you've only got half the solution. All right, we're going to go back and find x. So, uh, to find x, we go back to one of our original equations and substitute one in. So I'm just going to go to this first equation here and plug in one for y. So we get x plus three times one equals one, so x equals negative two. All right, so this would be the ordered pair negative two, one. If you were to take both these equations and graph them, they would intersect at negative two, comma one. If you were to take um, these equations and solve it using the substitution method, you would still get negative two, comma one. And now with this new method called the elimination method, right? All three methods, you should still get the same solution. All right, so kind of get the idea. All right, so let's expand this out a little bit. All right, so. If we look at this next uh, system, 3x plus y equals 5 and x minus 2 equals 4, if we added them up right away, we would get 4x minus y equals 9, and that does nothing for us. We want one of the letters to disappear. Well, now we're going to bring in the idea of, of you can do pretty much anything you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides. So the goal is to eliminate one of the letters. So you get to choose, do I want to eliminate x or do I want to eliminate y? Right, so for example, I'm going to go ahead and choose, um, let's, let's eliminate y here. So if I want to eliminate y, um, I need to make this coefficient up here of y be uh, the same but opposite sign of this coefficient down here. Right, in other words, I need this to be a 2y. Well, you can't just make it a 2y, right? But you can take this whole equation and multiply both sides by 2. We know that we can multiply both sides of an equation by any number but 0, right? So here's the notation I'm going to use for that. I'm going to put a little arrow out here, and I'm going to say this. And what that's doing is telling me that I'm multiplying this equation, both sides of this equation, by 2. And when you do that, you get 6x plus 2y equals 10. Now I'm not going to do anything to the second equation, so I'm just going to rewrite it over here. x minus 2y equals 4. And then add them up. So that gives you 7x. The y's go away. That's the whole reason we're doing this. And then that gives you 14. So then x equals 2. Right, and then go back and figure out what y needs to be. So to find y, I'm going to go ahead and take 2 and plug it into this first equation right here and get 3 times 2 plus y equals 5. So y equals, was it negative 1? So the ordered pair 2 comma negative 1 is the solution to this system. Everybody see that? So sometimes you may need to multiply an equation or you may need to multiply both equations by um, different numbers in order to get the coefficient of uh, the coefficients of one of your letters to be the same but opposite signs. That way when you add them up, they disappear. All right, so now this, I've got a couple special cases. Uh, and I've got, this is very simplified special case here, right? But the um, idea is when you go to the elimination method, if when you go to add up both sides, right, you may have to do some work to get to this stage. When you go up to add up both sides and you get everything to disappear. Remember, all your letters disappeared here when you add them up. And uh, you're left with a statement. That statement is either true or false. Right, just like before. This is true. So everybody remember what that means? All right, that means there's an infinite number of solutions and this is a dependent system. A dependent system. There are an infinite number of solutions. So you would say, all right, infinite solutions. Sorry, I'm writing a little fast there. That means if you graph them, they, they would be the same line, right? One line would fall on top of the other line. 
Uh, all right, so then this one over here, if you, you, know, you get all your work and you go to add them up and all your letters disappear, and this time you're left with a false statement, then that means that you've got um, uh, no solutions, right? There's no solution. This is also called an inconsistent system. But we typically just say, all right, there's no solution. All right, so these are two special cases, just like they were with the um, substitution method. If your letters disappear, then if you're left with a statement, if that statement is true, then you have infinite solutions. And if that statement is false, then you have no solution. All right? Okay, let's do one more example. So 3x plus 4y equals negative 17, and 4x minus 3y equals negative 6. You need to choose which letter would you like to eliminate. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate y. So in order to do that, I need to have these coefficients be the same number but opposite signs. And so everybody see we'd like to make these a, a 12 and a negative 12. All right, so it means I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3, and that gives us 9x plus 12y equals negative 51. And then the bottom equation, we need to multiply by 4, and that would give us 16x minus 12y equals negative 24. And then add them up. And so that's going to be 25x. Y's disappear, that's the whole point, and that gives you negative 75. All right, so then x is negative 3. And then go back and find y. So I'm going to plug it into the first equation again. And it doesn't matter, you can plug it into the second one. 3 times negative 3 plus 4y equals negative 17. So what is that? 4y equals negative 8. So y equals negative 2. So this would be the ordered pair, negative 3, negative 2. If you were to graph both of these equations, they would intersect at the point negative 3, negative 2. If you were to solve the system using the substitution method, which I don't think I would encourage you to do because you would have to isolate one of the letters and you'd get some fractions, right? But it could be done. So you could solve this by the substitution method and you would still get negative 3 comma negative 2. But the elimination method, uh, it's, it's pretty nice, all right? Even if you have fractions to begin with, you can eliminate the fractions by multiplying through by the common denominator, right? and then get it down to, say, this situation right here on the left, and then continue on to uh, make your uh, um, coefficients to be the same but opposite sign, so then when you add them up, one of your variables goes away. All right, so uh, the elimination method, pretty nice. All right, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.